Hello and welcome to another tutorial with me, Andrew. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to use a subtractive pipe modifier within Part Design Workbench. If you haven't seen my previous video on the additive pipe, then that might be a good place to start as I go into detail about some of the features you'll encounter when using these pipe modifiers. The subtractive pipe icon can be found in the Part Design Workbench and here on the tool ribbon. This modifier is exactly the same as the additive pipe, apart from we'll be subtracting material from a solid rather than adding it. Technical, I know. So I've created some simple geometry that consists of an extruded square, a circle drawn on the front face, and some simple line geometry created on our bottom face. As you can see, my path isn't in the centre of my circle. That's because when I create the pipe, it will follow the line in a 2D movement. So I'm going to click on the circle and click on the subtractive pipe modifier. I'm going to select our path to sweep along by clicking the object icon and then selecting any one of our four lines. It will then create this. In our corner transitions, we're going to select round corner which will then allow our subtractive path to flow better around the selected path. I'll click OK and you'll see that we've removed material from our extruded square. One thing you need to know is that your main piece of geometry must be an active body when subtracting. If I created a cylinder from the part workbench, you'll see that it doesn't get placed within the active body. Therefore, I'd have to activate this by clicking the new body icon before I can edit it. My next example will be creating a simple M10 thread. To start, I'm going to create a circle sketch on the XY plane and set that to 5mm radius. I'll then extrude that up and keep that as the default 10mm. I'll add a chamfer to both ends quickly by clicking on our center face and clicking the chamfer icon. Again, I'm going to leave that as the default, which in this case is 1mm. When creating our thread, we'll need a few dimensions, so I'm going to consult this image, which is a diagram of an ISO metric thread. This can be found in the Engineer's Black Book, 2nd edition. We'll be taking points from the bolt side as we are creating an external thread. What we'll be creating is an M10 by 1.5, 1.5 being the pitch or the spacing between each groove. So you take the pitch of the thread you are trying to create and you multiply that by the point you want to know the dimension of. So in our case, it'll be 0 0.125 times 1.5 or 0.25 times 1.5. I've already calculated the figures we'll need, so I won't require this image. I'm now going to create a sketch on the XZ plane. So clicking on a new sketch, click on the XZ and pressing OK. Toggle into the construction mode, I'm going to create a single line with a horizontal constraint. I'll offset that from our datum point by pressing Shift V and minus 2.5. The reason I've done that will become apparent in a minute. I'm going to toggle back to creating geometry and click on the polyline tool. Starting on our construction line, we'll create a triangle, like so. Now I just want to make sure that this is actually constrained in the vertical. I'll constrain the far right of our triangle by clicking on the vertex, pressing Shift H and setting that to 5.5. We want to set it to 5.5 and not 5 because we want this to go past this, the radius of our cylinder. While holding control, I'm going to click on these two lines and I'm going to set the angle. The hotkey on the keyboard is A. I'm going to set this dimension to 60 degrees. I'm also going to constrain this line here to the centre of our construction line by clicking these two vertices, holding control, clicking on our construction line and then hitting the symmetry icon. For the symmetry shortcut, that's S on the keyboard. I now need to create a fillet between these two lines here. So I'm going to click on this icon, which is the fillet icon. Click on these two lines, and it will create our fillet. I'm going to set the radius of this to 0 0.21. But for those looking to be really precise, it's 0 0.21645. I'll constrain the center of our fillet by clicking on the center point, pressing Shift H on the keyboard, and setting that to 4.29. I now have two degrees of freedom left our fillet and our construction line, which is the uh, overall length. If I select the center of our fillet and select the construction line, I can click on the symmetry icon, and that will solve both degrees of freedom. I'm now going to close that sketch, and we now have the sketch for our thread. To create a helix for our sketch to flow around, we'll move over to the part workbench, and locate the creation of parameterized geometric primitives, which is here on the toolbar. I'll click it, and select Helix on the drop-down. For the settings, 
we'll set the pitch to 1.5 as we we're creating an M10 by 1.5, the height to 15 mil and the radius to 5 mil. I'm going to leave the angle the same as this causes the helix to move out in a cone shape depending on what angle you set it at. I'm also going to leave this drop down the same as we're creating a right handed helix for a right handed thread compared to the left hand. Click and create once will give us our helix and then I click close. I'll now move back over to the part design workbench, click on model, click on our helix and I'm going to move that down in the Z by minus 2.5. This will make our helix overshoot both ends of our cylinder shape, hence why I also moved down our sketch 2.5mm. That just creates a better looking thread at the ends of our part. So now that we have all our parts we need to create our thread, what else? Well, as you can see our helix is currently not in our active body. I could select our helix and click on the shape binder, which creates a reference object which transfers our selected face or line into the active body. If we don't use the shape binder tool, we'll be presented with three different options, which I will show you in just a moment. For now, I'm going to select our simple 2D sketch, click on the subtractive pipe icon, click our object, which is going to be our helix. And as you can see, we are presented with this wibbly wobbly uh, helix or thread which goes around our part. What I'm going to do is in the orientation mode is set it from standard to fret. This will keep our geometry the same all the way around our helix. Now this may take a little bit of time depending on your computer hardware so just bear with it, um, it will get there in the end. I now click OK and you'll see that I'm faced with three different options. Make independent copy recommended. This is exactly the same as if we created a shape binder and put a copy into the active body. This allows us to delete, manipulate or resize our helix without affecting the geometry we've created. However, it's probably best not to do that just because it could potentially create an unstable part. Make dependent copy. This means that when we manipulate or change our original helix, it will affect the geometry we've made. Basically, our subtractive pipe depends on the helix path. Create cross reference. I'm not entirely sure what this does. Obviously, it's in the name, so it creates geometry that references to our helix, I guess. But at the same time, I feel like that's exactly what the other two have done. So if anyone knows what this actually does, let me know in the comments below, because there doesn't seem to be any documentation about it. Nine times out of ten, you'll want to create an independent copy. I personally can't see a use for the other two selections, but now you know they're there, maybe you'll be able to find a use. So I'm going to create an independent copy and say OK. If we hide our helix in our left, left model tab, as you can see, we have created our thread. Now this is just one of many ways of creating thread, threads in FreeCAD, uh, so I would suggest giving all of them a go and finding out which one actually works best for you. My third example is adding finger grips to this valve. Earlier, I spoke about how the line didn't have to be in the centre of some types of geometry, depending on what you create. Here, I have three arcs, all originating from the same origin point. I'll click on the sketch I want to sweep, in this case being the circle, and press the subtractive pipe icon. As I cycle through the different arcs, from large to small, notice how the geometry of the pipe stays the same. Now if I would set the orientation mode to fixed, this is where setting your line becomes important. As you can see, the pipe changes with every arc. What I'm saying is, in some cases you don't have to set the line, but in others you will. It comes down to the geometry you'd like to create and the different modes you use. Now that we've got our subtractive pipe, and we've got our orientation mode set to standard, I'm going to say OK. I'm going to hide the other two sketches that we were using as examples, and you'll see that I've created a subtractive pipe within our part. I'm now going to select the subtractive pipe, and click on the polar pattern icon. I'm going to select the VZ axis as our rotation point, and I'm going to set the occurrences to 5. Clicking OK will make our geometry official, and as you can see I've created some finger grips on the outside of our valve handle. I'm just going to quickly add some fillets to these corners here, and there we have it. Now there are multiple ways to create geometry for the finger grips. You could just pocket the sketch through, you could loft to a slightly larger sketch to add more flow, but to add a slight curve, or even more flow than flow, you could use a subtractive pipe. It's just as easy as the other two. 
As you can see, if I click through the other tabs, we get varying different geometries. So this one's a loft, and this one's just a simple pocket from our top face pocketed through. Each of them create varying geometries, but it just comes down to whatever you prefer. I think what it boils down to is number one, the geometry you're creating, and number two, what you're most comfortable with. In some ways you'll be able to use a pocket, in others you'll use a loft, and sometimes you might use a subtractive pipe. There is no one way to do something, and that will be all for today's tutorial. Hopefully I've given you another tool you can add to your CAD toolkit and make your workflow a little easier. There are just so many examples and it's a shame I can't fit them all into a short video, but hopefully I've given you the basic lowdown. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, and if you dislike the video, give it a thumbs down. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you for over 100 subscribers. It's been an awesome few weeks and I really appreciate all the comments and likes. I've got a lot more ideas planned, so we'll see what the future brings. Have an awesome weekend, and I'll see you in the next video.